Another era in Detroit is over. Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn have been fired from the Detroit Lions. The Lions are moving on from Matt Patricia, their coach of the last three seasons. Bob Quinn, their general manager of the past three to four seasons. Detroit is heading in a new direction, clearly. We do not know who the next head coach is going to be, who the next general manager is going to be. But obviously, the Lions have made their decision that the future is not in the hands of Matt Patricia. The decisions will not be made by Bob Quinn, and the Lions will be going in a different direction. As for their quarterback, Matthew Stafford, we do not know if they're going to be keeping him or not. But in this video, I wanted to go live because obviously I've been somebody on YouTube that has probably covered the Lions more than most. When talking about an NFL channel that covers every team, I do try to provide a spotlight for every team. But I have gotten a lot of respect, a lot of encouragement, a lot of positivity coming from Detroit Lions fans over the past two seasons, and I appreciate their support. So I wanted to do this live. I wanted to talk to you guys as Lions fans or NFL fans on your perspective on the move of moving on from Matt Patricia, moving on from Bob Quinn. Now, from my perspective, I believe this is a good move professionally. I think this is a good football move for the Lions. I think they needed to move on. Clearly, their number one issue, in my opinion, has been football coaching. Not, you know, the players, not the person of Matt Patricia. Nothing to do with that, but the coaching on Sundays throughout the week. And I think it more had to do with Patricia coming into Detroit, trying to from the ground up, build an association. And that's never a easy thing to do. What Matt Patricia intended to do in Detroit was basically erase 50 plus years of terrible football and try to bring a winning culture to an organization that's never had winning football. Like, basically never. I mean, there's been moments, there's been years of success but long stretches of success have been denied for Detroit Lions fans for decades upon decades. So you have to first respect Matt Patricia and his goal for what he intended on doing, what he tried to do in Detroit. He, he poured his heart into it, but it did not work out. It did not happen for him. It did not happen for Bob Quinn. But I think we miss... Before I get into the, you know, X's and O's in the in the where the lines could go and and my thoughts on the move itself, we always have to remember that these are guys that are this is their jobs. I mean, these are their jobs. This is their livelihood we're talking about. So when you're talking about somebody being fired, that's not a good thing. I mean, I, I understand that if you're a Lions fan, you might be excited because you didn't like Matt Patricia. You, you may have not liked Bob Quinn. But at the same time, you have to understand that these guys, this is how they're being paid. This is how they're living their life. So I'm sure that Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn will find a job somewhere, maybe even back with the Patriots. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But it with every firing, I do need to give that first, just... Because that's something that's always missed. I know that it's sports, and I know that they're paid a lot of money to do their job, and I get it. But again, guys, this is their job, right? So you need to put that into context. But in terms of Matt Patricia, he failed. He did not do what he intended on doing, and he did not live up to expectation. When you hired him, this was a guy that... After 2017, you know, had years of playoff experience, years of Super Bowl winning teams and experiencing the biggest of games, coaching the New England Patriots defense and being the defensive coordinator, being a coach in multiple different facets of the organization. 
you know, from the offensive line to the defensive line to the linebackers, basically everywhere Matt Patricia has coached throughout the course of his career on defense specifically, but also on the offensive side of the ball as well. And he had that kind of an interesting, you know, rise in the NFL being the rocket scientist as he's commonly made fun of, but that's kind of how he got his way into the NFL was groomed under Bill Belichick as a defensive coach and then made his way up the ladder. And he was gained enough respect around the NFL where it wasn't just the Lions who were interested in him, but multiple teams. He eventually got the job. And then he goes to Detroit and he tries too hard, in my opinion, to be Bill Belichick. He goes to Detroit and he tries too hard to kind of install the Patriot way, which is never a good way of going about things. If you're going to try to be somebody else, it's not going to work. You have to be yourself and you have to bring your own identity and you need to bring your own sensibilities to the table because that's why they hired you. Okay, they hired you because you're a part of the Patriots, definitely. But they also hired you because of your personality, because of who you are. And they didn't hire you to hire Bill Belichick, right? So it, it, it's it's impossible to be Bill Belichick. This is where you know, people commonly are upset with Patriot hiring Patriot coaches because they try to come in and they try to be something they are not. They try to be Bill Belichick instead of what some of the successful coaches have done, like Brian Flores and some of these coaches, right? Even Bill O'Brien in part, uh, Mike Vrabel in part, take aspects of Bill Belichick, take aspects of his organization, take aspects of his coaching style, and then mold it to your style to be successful. And Matt Patricia tried too hard to just clearly fit into the lane of Bill Belichick instead of being Matt Patricia with Bill Belichick, you know, knowledge kind of thing. But that didn't happen. Now with Bob Quinn, I don't really know if he did a poor job. I'm not going to sit here and say the Lions were a bad team, you know, like uh, roster wise, because that's his job. Okay. The general manager. And, and as this worked out, you know, Bob Quinn was there to build a roster that he felt could win and specifically build a roster in the image of Matt Patricia and what Patricia wants to do on offense and on defense. So it's always difficult for me to blame the general manager. Now, if he just consistently messed up first round picks and trades and acquisitions and free agent signings, I would be all over Bob Quinn for doing a poor job. But in this case, when you look at the roster of the Lions, you know, the last few years, they've been fairly talented. They've had some really good players. They've had some really good draft picks. They've had some really good signings. But there's also been moments of, you know, maybe you could have made a better pick here. You Maybe you could have made a better acquisition here. Maybe you paid too much money to this guy or that guy, obviously. But when you t- take that into perspective, you need to account for, okay, he was building the team that he thought Matt Patricia could win with. So what did that mean? Okay, that meant specifically on defense, I'm going to get man coverage players for the secondary. I'm going to get these, you know, uh, bigger linebackers that can blitz and they're kind of versatile and they can play on the edge. And he was trying to build the Patriot defense in the image of Matt Patricia. So he was trying to do that. He even signed multiple Patriots to be able to bring the culture aspect of New England, which is what Patricia was striving to do, it just never really worked out. Obviously, they lost a season by losing Matthew Stafford for an entire year. You wonder how it may have changed, how it might have worked out if Stafford was there all last year. Maybe they would have bought themselves more time, but this was the season. We knew that coming into this year, that it was rather going to be the Lions finally figure it out under Matt Patricia or Matt Patricia gets fired. We kind of knew that coming into this third season because we understood that they spent money in free agency, that they acquired a lot of players these last two seasons to build the team in their image and then ultimately put it on the field to win. And they just weren't able to do enough. And I mostly blame Matt Patricia for that because these are the, these are the, the reasons for, I think, the failure in Detroit. Not only was he trying to be something he is not, I don't think Matt Patricia is built to be a head coach. I don't think you'll ever see him get another head coaching opportunity because I think there were too many negative 
conversations coming out of the Detroit media, coming out of the Detroit locker room that kind of led us on to this guy is, you know, stubborn. This guy is kind of, what's the word? He's, he's put up a wall, so to speak, right? He, he doesn't allow for uh, players to be themselves. He does. He's, he's trying to be so strict and so fake in a way that it's, it's not genuine. So, so this is also the problem with, with the Belichick way or the Patriot way. When you're not Bill Belichick and you try to be Bill Belichick, it doesn't come across the same way. Bill Belichick can speak the way he does to the media. Bill Belichick can speak the way he does to players. Bill Belichick can run the organization the way he does by letting go of players harshly, trading players for picks, um, you know, letting guys walk because he is Bill Belichick, because he's built years of this because he's bold, because he's extremely intelligent, while Patricia, you know, has had success in the league. He's not Bill Belichick. So there's a lot There's a lot to do with that. Um, I think just from the leadership perspective, he doesn't provide a bravado. He doesn't provide a charisma that is of a head coach. And I said this early this season. You know, there's something about Patricia that he doesn't present to me as a head coach. He doesn't seem to have the the confidence that a head coach would have. He's a coordinator, and I think he's a solid coordinator. Whether that's in New England or somewhere else, I think he'll be fine as a position coach, a coordinator. He's just not built to be the leader of a group of men, and that is the number one skill you need to have as a head coach. You know, you could be an absolute genius at the game of football, but if you can't present your ideas, if you're not a great teacher, if you're not a great communicator, what's the point of being so smart? So that's the problem with Patricia to me. He's better in that coordinator role because there's a guy above him who can present the overall message, can present the overall vision of a team. But when you're Patricia and you and, and he can focus on just one side of the ball, he doesn't have to overlook every sense of the organization, connect this offense with this defense. And I think he tried to do that. You know, he wanted to play um, deep passing with running that football play action game, all of that stuff with a defense that played heavy man, you know, um, played a lot of coverage. He tried to like connect things together, but it, it just never worked. The image just never was able to deliver. So, and I, I again, I just don't think he had it. Um, secondly, with Patricia, I just, I, he, he was very stubborn. You could tell this not even by being in the organization or knowing the man, just by watching his team every Sunday. The lack of of changing the lack of ability to say when something is wrong and that often is is the case with many coaches that are fired many coaches that are let go prematurely or early I should say is because they just lack the ability to adapt lack the ability to change we've seen this with great coaches early in their careers right Um, I would say Sean McVay is the best example right now of a guy that has been able to do something, it works, then change. Do something, it doesn't work, he loses, then change. And not only does Sean McVay have that intelligence and vision of the head coach, but he also has the charisma to portray it and to give it off to a team. And that's, to me, what a head coach is. It's not necessarily being the smartest guy in the room, but it's being the guy that has the ability to see things before they happen, ability to see when to change, when to move directions, and when to sense where a team is at. And that's what a head coach is more than anything. I don't think Mike Tomlin is the smartest football coach I've ever seen, but he's extremely, extremely smart in communicating to his players. And he's also just a guy that can see when to do something, when to change. You know, last year, his ability to um, persevere through a really bad quarterback position was because he understood where this team needed to go with that bad quarterback play. So Patricia just doesn't have those traits and that's what makes him a bad head coach. And that's why I think he was fired. Um, again, for Bob Quinn, I don't necessarily think he did a bad job. The elephant in the room here is that I think Caldwell was prematurely fired. And I think we found that out, you know, this year, 
for sure, but maybe even over the past two years. It was a little puzzling when they did fire him, considering they did go 9-7. and seven. But obviously the Lions, and, and this is the thing, a lot of people are going to look at this and say, you know, you shouldn't have fired Caldwell, Jim Caldwell. But I kind of understand why they did, okay? I get it. He was 9-7. and seven. He had a couple of good years. He, met, he made the playoffs. He was, he's a solid football coach. But what the Lions were do, trying to do, again, you have to always, you can't just sit back and be Monday morning quarterback. You can't just sit back and, and with hindsight say, you know, th this was a bad move. You have to look at where they were at and saying the Lions were a bad or mediocre franchise for many seasons. What they were trying to do in firing Caldwell was they saw multiple seasons of him being okay, but nothing spectacular. So what they were trying to do was bring in a coach and a organization and a um, influence that they thought would bring this a winning culture inside the organization. And yes, it didn't work, but it was worth the swing, in my opinion. Was Caldwell ever going to bring them a Super Bowl? No. So if you're a fan that's sitting there and saying, you know, Caldwell was should never have been fired. And sure, you know, in terms of his production for the team, probably not. Okay, I agree with you. But if you were trying to swing for the fences and make a move to get greatness out of it, you do need to move on from mediocrity to get greatness, in my opinion, in sports. And maybe Patricia was just the wrong guy to hire. If you just consider it back back that year. Maybe you should have just fired Caldwell, but hired somebody different, hired a different uh, influence. So yeah, I, I that's an interesting dilemma, an interesting question to kind of discuss, I think is the Caldwell question. And But I think it's kind of been proven that, I mean, nobody else went out and hired him. So obviously, like, is he really that spectacular? I don't know. He's, he's a, again, he's a solid football coach. But am I saying that he is a Hall of Famer? Is he Would he enter the NFL today and be a top 10 coach? No. So for the Lions, you got to understand their history, their organization, and understanding that they were searching for culture, right? And it, it just, it didn't it didn't pan out. And it, it's, it's sad, but it didn't pan out. So now they're at the same stage now. Now they're trying to find um, greatness. Um, they're trying to find, and then, that's the thing with the Lions. This is going to be very interesting to see what they do with their decision. Are they bold in their decision or are they just searching for a guy that can get the job done? Because I think for many years there, the Lions were searching for a serviceable coach, a guy that could get by, a guy that could bring success, but not greatness. And this is the question with the Lions. Do they search for a guy that might be outside of the box, a guy that strikes them as and it all starts at the top right of every organization you notice that every organization that is good has great ownership and that's because they understand how to hire people and who to hire in what moment to hire them so whether that's the coach the general manager or in getting and understanding who the franchise quarterback is to give him an extension owners good owners know people and know people that are going to get the job done and they don't necessarily know football, but they know people. So the thing is, with the ownership in Detroit, that's where the blame starts. And then it can trickle down from there. So the owners need to be better with their decision making this time. They need to understand what's what was the issue with our last hire. We need to self-scout ourselves, go forward, and then see, okay, who are the candidates this time? Who do we think gives us the greatest chance who strikes us as an as an alpha personality, a guy that might be outside the box, that has creative ideas, that seems to be a guy that is going to bring a solid culture, understands the landscape of the modern NFL. Those are all things that you need to look for. You know, those are guys like Kyle Shanahan, like Sean McVay, um, obviously like Bill Belichick, like Andy Reid. Uh, these guys that they're clearly identifiable when you watch their teams um, you can see their influence on the organization. And that is what they need to look for first in the general manager. And how this process usually works is they hire the general manager, then they hire the head coach based on the general manager's relationship with the head coach. Maybe they could do it backwards, head coach, general manager. Uh, I doubt that they'll just give the head coach both duties. That's rare. 
So we'll see if they go outside the box or they stay inside the box. The Lions have had many times where they've hired a coach where they've stayed inside the box. And that's been the problem with Detroit for many years. So those are my overall thoughts on the move. I think it is a good move for Detroit. Don't get me wrong. I've been saying and sitting here that Matt Patricia has been the issue. The coaching has been the problem, not the players. While the players, you know, it's not the most talented roster in football. I expected more from this team based on the roster. So, and the quarterback. You have a good quarterback. The problem is, okay, is Stafford the quarterback moving forward? Or is the general manager and the coach going to basically scrap this era and move forward? I don't think... The, the uh, decision will be made on Stafford based, and just like Matt Ryan, in my opinion, the decision will not be made on Matt Ryan or Matthew Stafford based on how good they are because they're still good and they're still going to be better than 85% of quarterbacks that you can get in the NFL. But is it just time for a new era? And it could be. And honestly, it probably should be for Matthew Stafford. It should be for him because he should be looking at his age his career and understanding that, okay, I have five years left or whatever, um, maybe more, but let's say I have five years left. I want to go somewhere where I have a realistic chance that I can win something because I've never been able to do that in my career. I need to go somewhere with a team that's ready to contend now that is looking for a quarterback. And and that could be a multitude of places, but for Stafford, that's that would be my advice to him. Try to leave Detroit because obviously they are in rebuild mode. Um, so, and and this is the thing: like, do you decide to rebuild with with Stafford? Because that's like not a good move. Because if you do, like, you have a veteran quarterback and you're rebuilding with a veteran quarterback, it's not a good move. But if you just decide to retool, I don't know if they have enough to decide to just retool and simply we'll be back in the playoffs with better coaching. I mean, maybe, but what's your ceiling on that? So. There's a lot of questions to be answered in Detroit. I want to get to your questions and your comments now, guys. If you haven't already, Gronk spike that like button. And if you haven't, of course, subscribe to the channel for more NFL. All right, let's take a look at those comments and let's see what you guys think about this move. And if you haven't already commented, get in those comments right now. Uh, Cad says Jim Harbaugh is our next guy. I don't think Jim Harbaugh is going to be the, uh, the the next guy, but that's just me. Um, Jack says trash to Detroit. Um, yeah, Diego added me real quick. Seahawks and Lions fan says Eric Bieniemy. I mean, potentially, a, a lot of people are saying Eric Bieniemy is one of the top hires out there or one of the top guys that are is going to be potentially on the short list of head coaching candidates he could be the guy but I, I don't know if the enemy would not get a better job here's the thing with the lions they are not in a position like the texans are right so the texans yes probably have an overall worse roster than the lions but they have Deshaun Watson, who's still, like, he's just entering his prime, right? So it's not a very desirable spot in Detroit. I mean, there's been a lot of coaches under this ownership that have failed, that have not, you know, resulted in successful careers. So you got to think in the perspective of the coaches that will be hired. Where would you like to go? You know, a place with Deshaun Watson or Detroit? right? That's had years of losing. So there's Deshaun Watson and the Texans. There's the Atlanta Falcons, um, who do, I think, have strong ownership. You know, you have probably some other teams. I can't even think off the top of my head who those would be, really. Uh, the Jets, probably, for sure. And the Jets have the number one pick. I'm thinking the Bengals will be a team, potentially, that that's hiring a new coach, but we'll have to see. So there's going to be positions like the Jets with Trevor Lawrence, uh, the Bengals with Joe Burrow, the Texans with Deshaun Watson. The Atlanta Falcons are kind of similar to the Lions, but they have a, a longer tenure of success under that ownership. So Detroit might be last on the totem pole for coaches. So 
they are going to have to think the most outside of the box in terms of who they hire and who potentially would want to work there, to be honest with you. Like, that's my opinion on it. Can you see them trading Galladay? Potentially, but I think the receiver position, specifically number one receivers, are so valuable. It's hard to trade a guy like Galladay. Galladay is a number one receiver. He's proven his worth to this team. When he's been hurt this year, they have not been the same team. So, in my opinion, they will sign him. But, I mean, who knows, really? Anthony says, who are your favorites for the head coaching and GM position in Detroit as a Lions fan? I honestly don't know off the top of my head. I would suspect that they won't go the Patriot route again. I mean, obviously, people have brought up Eric Bieniemy. I think he's going to go to one of the top positions available, potentially Houston. Um, that would be interesting, though, Bieniemy in Detroit. Who else would be, you know, the Rams defensive coordinator, Staley, I believe his name is? He... He could be interesting, but, you know, that's a little short term in terms of what he's accomplished, it, as well as, you know, Joe Brady in Carolina, the offensive coordinator, he's had short term success as well. So there's a lot of intriguing names out there that are kind of young and that don't really have a lot of, you'd be taking a chance, I think, the Lions on hiring one of these guys to be your your next coach. Um is there other guys that out there? I'm probably missing a whole bunch, but there there's a number of guys out there. I read a tweet by Adam Schefter, he like listed a whole bunch of them. I'm not exactly sure who they are. In terms of general managers, that's a good question. I'm not as up on the names for general manager. You know what's interesting is just a take on general manager the more that we go through you know time of the importance of the media and you know these guys that have proven track records as scouts and as guys that have delivered in terms of analysis you know we saw Mike Mayock get hired as a general manager this is I'm not saying the Lions will do this I'm just saying like Going forward, will we see more of those general managers hired where it's like a complete bold move, like a guy, like a, you know, a, a head scout for NFL Network is hired again? Like, is that a thing going forward? Or is that just Mike Mayock over years of years of years of analysis that he was able to be hired? So um, that's interesting as well when thinking about that from the NFL perspective. Uh, Dark says Matt Patricia should go back to New England so Bill can focus on the offense. Uh, Patricia, I think, would obviously be a fit in New England. I think the thing with the Patriots is they do need more help on the defensive side of the ball from experienced minds in the game. They have a lot of young guys, a lot of, you know, a couple of Belichick sons and guys that are very, very young coaches. So I think... They need more experience. You know, they went those seasons there of losing countless names of really good coaches. Um, the Giants D coordinator is a, a former Patriot coach. Uh, obviously, Brian Flores, Matt Patricia. Um, they lost Peppers, the linebacker coach, former linebacker in the NFL. Uh, they lost a lot of really good coaches over the years. Uh, Gerard Mayo is, is, is a good coach, but... And they have a couple of good guys under the radar. But they lost a lot of defensive coaches over the past like three to four years. So it would be really nice just to see an established name that knows what he's doing. I understand he's not been the greatest in terms of his perception of what he's done. But I would welcome him back as in any sort of role. Um, whether that's defense, defensive coordinator. He doesn't have to call plays, but just helping defensive coordinator wise I think that would be welcomed because like with such a young Patriot roster Patricia would be nice to have with some of those young players to kind of start to groom them up while Belichick can start to focus a little bit more on offense in the direction of the offense as well so yeah this is a Patriot team that's going through a little bit of a you know a switch a, a, a retooling 
So Belichick kind of being able to sit back and take on more of the vision role would be nice to see while McDaniels and Patricia are there on each side of the ball, kind of like they were from 20, you know, 12 to 2016. Uh, Ultra says, where does Stafford and Galladay, the top players on Detroit, go from here? I think Galladay will stay. I'm not sure about Stafford, though. I'm hoping Stafford finds his way out. Again, this is kind of biased for me, but I've always wanted Matthew Stafford. I, I tweeted this out. I never wanted a quarterback to leave an organization so bad in my life. I hope he goes to San Francisco, man. I really do. Um, but if he doesn't, you know, there's a number of teams that could use a quarterback. Denver, I think, would be one of them. I think he would fit there as well. I think there's some teams that will be searching for a veteran quarterback this offseason. Maybe even, you know, the Saints. I don't know. Um, I think he would fit there as well. But there's there's a lot of teams that are that have really good rosters that just don't have a quarterback. And I think that's probably where Stafford's going to end up. Probably outside of Detroit. Could he stay in Detroit? Yes. I wouldn't doubt it. Maybe even just for one year as a bridge quarterback, kind of. But I would like to see him leave, personally. It says, trade Stafford to the Colts for a late first and a second round pick. I don't know if it would take that much. I think it would take a first. I'm not sure if it would take a first and a second, though. I mean, he is a quarterback, so... I really don't know. Sometimes, you know, trades kind of come out of nowhere and the value of these players is, is who knows, but yeah, maybe, um, Colts are another one. I think that's, that's a good destination though, because Phillip Rivers is probably going to be done. And I think when the Colts look back at this season, they're going to see their flaws were Rivers was just fine and not good enough. And their receiving core isn't good enough. So I think the Colts going into next year are probably going to want a better quarterback and maybe a receiver. And as long as they got those things, they're going to be like a legitimate team because they have good management. They have good coaching. They're a team to look out for in the next two to three years because they have a lot of young talent on the offensive line, on defense, some on offense. So they're yeah they're interesting for sure I, I and if they were to get a guy like Stafford to be their quarterback for the next three years he could win them a Super Bowl with you know if they add another receiver there because they got a really good defense he's much better than Rivers in my opinion um but he's not too different from Rivers so that's good um but yeah that that would be a good destination for sure Max says Stafford to the Patriots for a second rounder uh, ye, I don't think they're going to move on from Cam. I think Cam's going to stay. And if they, they add another quarterback, it will be through the draft. In my opinion, like the only way they get Stafford, like they would have uh, imagine, right? They would have to trade a second and sign Stafford, right? So Cam is going to be cheaper than Stafford and you don't have to give a second round pick. So I don't know that they would do that. that. Just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I mean, I wouldn't rule it out, but it, it just doesn't really seem to make sense. Brian says, "Mitch, what do you think about my Bears 2020 offseason plan?" I will repost it right now. Okay, let me know. He says, "2020 Bears offseason tank, go five and eleven. Should be a top ten pick. Fire Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy." Uh, hire Robert. Is it? I always get his last name wrong. Is it Sala or Sal? I don't know. I I know who you're talking about though. I always get his name wrong. Um, then let Trubisky walk. Trade Robert Quinn. I don't think anyone's gonna trade for Foles, and I don't. I don't think anyone's gonna trade for any of those players. Maybe Robert Quinn for like a fifth or sixth round pick. Uh, and in terms of the coach you picked and you selected, I think that's an interesting one because he's a defensive coach and he runs a scheme that I'm not a huge fan of. He's had a lot of talent, so I'm not exactly sold on him out of all the candidates, especially because today's NFL is an offensive league. 
So I would prefer to go in the offensive route. Um, and there's a number of good young offensive coaches that are out there. The Bears are another team that are not going to be in a good spot. They're probably even lower than the Bear or than the Lions because they have a worse cap situation. They're an old roster and they have no quarterback. So they're probably even an even worse spot than the Lions. So they're going to get a bottom coaching candidate probably. Jack says Detroit could have such a good offense if they had an offensive line. I would agree. I'm interested to see what Bevel does for the rest of the year with them. If this changes his approach on offense, he's been good and bad at times. I think he's been too run heavy, but that's kind of always been his thing. I think he needed to allow Stafford to throw the ball more. But, you know, like I've also liked some of the things he's done in Detroit. So I am intrigued to see this team play and, and how that changes this team for the rest of the year. And that's all you can really hope for. You're not hoping for some sort of bounce back to the playoffs. That's not going to happen. But just to see if they play better with more heart, more passion, and and the offense and defense play better. Anthony says, with the success of Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury, do you think Detroit might go after a guy like Dabo Sweeney or Lincoln Riley. I mean, I think Lincoln Riley has been a candidate for a very long time in this league, but has just never wanted to leave. You got to think, though, with, with both of those guys that are such big names in college football and, and renowned in college football and have so much control, it's hard to give up that role. That's why Nick Saban never left again, right? Because he understood how the NFL and college football are different. It's just hard to get one of those guys. Maybe eventually one of them will want to accomplish something in the NFL because they realize the NFL is the NFL. And in order to be looked at as a the all-time special head coach, you need to have success at the NFL level, right? Like a Jimmy Johnson. So we'll see if one of those guys do that. But I, I don't know if it would be with the Lions. <laughs> That's just me. I think if it was to happen, it would be with the Texans. If one of those guys were to leave, it would be with Houston, in my opinion, because they see Deshaun Watson there. Um, it would it would have to, or maybe the Bengals, right? Um, that's It would have to be a young quarterback who looks to be a superstar. That would have to be the lore for them. Because ultimately, as much as I love coaches, quarterback first and foremost is the determining factor in wins and losses. Coach, you know, coach and quarterback work in unison, but a quarterback, I think, is still number one. I think a great quarterback can overcome a bad coach, but a great coach can't overcome a bad quarterback. Don says Detroit in the goddamn building. What else we got here? It's just me says it's. Is it the line, the defense, or the atmosphere in the locker room? Line, the defense, the atmosphere in the locker room. Uh, I think it's a combination of both. I've heard Lions players speak, or former Lions players speak rel relatively negatively about Matt Patricia. I've also heard some players speak pretty well about Matt Patricia. So I think, you know, the atmosphere must have been better this year. You know, they brought in numerous free agents from New England who like Matt Patricia, who understand who he is, and, you know, they bought into him. So they went there for a reason, right? But I think it's more so to do with his scheme. I think he's just he's just stubborn, and he doesn't, he doesn't change to fit his personnel. Like, he was trying to run man-to-man -man even with backup corners and it was too predictable. He put his players in bad spots and some bad play calling, some bad, you know, I would say for a guy that believes in football to be played, you know, as a mix of an offense and a defense, I'm forgetting what the term is called. Damn it. It's a Patriot term. They always talk about it, but just, you know, having that cohesive offense, defense, understanding what we want to be, that was missing from Detroit. And I think the way they were playing was not fitting their players very well and doing what's best to win. 
So I think the Lions hired Patricia thinking he would be a guy that's game plan specific, you know, that would come in with doing the right thing each and every week in game planning. And that just never kind of worked at all, or he never really brought that to the table. So I think it was a combination of both. But I think the atmosphere in the locker room has more to do with how Matt Patricia comes across more than actually him. I think he's a good guy. I think a lot of people have said he's a great guy. It's just like he does not come across as that head coach, you know, that's going to lead you to the promised land sort of guy, right? Bengals have the worst ownership in sports. That's definitely, you know, possible. What else we have? Can you give me a quick take on the Patriots this season? Jack, if you've been watching my channel, you kind of know what I think. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the least talented Patriot team since whew, um, 2000 and 2000, maybe? I mean, a long time. This is the least talented team for New England since the first year Bill Belichick was here. So that's number one. Number two, you know, they were going through losing a quarterback, bringing in a new quarterback. That quarterback got COVID. I think Cam's played well. I think Cam's actually been one of their better players. Their defense, this is the thing with New England. I thought, okay, coming in this season, if this team's going to be good, it's going to be because Cam works, but more so because the defense and the special teams and how they played last year will still be there, right? They were a defensive team. They were a special teams field position squad last year. You throw Cam into the mix, throw some creative running. That's actually worked. The defense hasn't lived up to the billing. You know, they were the best in the league last year. This year, they're the worst by DVOA. So... That's not how the Patriots can win. They can't win with a bad defense because they don't have the receivers, the tight ends, the passing game to be able to win in the NFL right now uh, consistently, let's say, with a bad defense. They just don't have the roster to do so. They're not the Seahawks, right? They don't have that team makeup. Um, what else? Durkant says, Lions need to retool, not rebuild. Singh says, I'm guessing that the Lions are going to hire someone that has not been in a position in the NFL. All right. Uh, Kevin says, Bill always focuses on all phases of the game. I agree. Yes, he does. Jeremy says, won't the next coach have to be black? Why? And their last coach was. I mean, maybe. I, I think they're just going to pick the best guy for the job. Uh, what else do we got here? Daniel says, what about Caldwell? Nah, that would be admitting a mistake. Uh, again, I said it all already. I think Caldwell is a solid football coach. I think he did a good job in Detroit. But is he going to be the answer? No, that's why they fired him. That's why they fired him. Because he was solid. He was average. But he was nothing special. That's why they fired him. If they thought he was special, he would be back in the NFL. Somebody else would have hired him by now, right? So, solid coach, did a solid job, but solid isn't what you should be looking for as a fan, right? You should be looking for great, fantastic, stellar, phenomenal, genius. That's not Caldwell to me. He's, he's do, you know, doable, serviceable, solid, uh, you know, was a wild card team, right? But... If you want to be, if you're a Detroit sports fan that wants to see your team with 10 years of success, is Caldwell going to be the coach? I don't think so. Again, because I think somebody else would have hired him by now. And that's not dismissing what Caldwell has done throughout the course of his career or did, but I don't think he's the answer now, especially, you know, he's getting older. He was already old in the first place. Aiden says maybe the G Lions should hire ex Falcons GM Thomas Dimitrov. I always like Dimitrov. Obviously, he's another Patriot guy. So, Aiden, when you're saying that, I don't think that's going to happen just because of that those ties. I think they're, you know, once you go a certain way, whether it's the Reed tree or it's the Belichick tree or it's the, you know, this, that, and the other, you tend to go the other way. It's like politics, right? If you went this way last time, 
You're going to go the other way if it didn't work out, right? It's just, That's exactly like quarterback, coach, whatever it is. The position of leadership usually sways to the opposite side of the spectrum when you had negative results. So that's probably what's going to happen in Detroit. You're not going to see a Dimitrov there, in my opinion. Um, do I think he's a good GM, though? Yeah, I do think he's a good GM. I think he was for Atlanta for many years. Uh, it just, I think it was more so to do with coaching, in my opinion. But happens, man. You lose your job. He had many years of success, and it just went downhill. And that's what happens with most GMs. Most GMs lose their jobs after 10 plus years. That's just what happens in the NFL. So he'll get another job. I don't know if he'll be a GM or some sort of like scouting assistant or something, but he'll he'll be somewhere unless he just decides to retire. Singh says the Lions are going to hire someone. Okay, I already saw that. What do we see? Matthew says Patricia was an average DC. I liked him, but that's who he is. he was. Yeah, I agree. I mean, but I would like to have him back in some role. I I wouldn't mind it. Uh, Kevin says Lions will wait to get a coordinator from one of this year's Super Bowl teams. Okay. Jeremy says the next GM would have to block two. Won't they get more draft picks by hiring a what? A black coach or GM? Is that what you're trying to say? I don't. Why? I don't know. Uh, Anthony says, I'm a Dolphins fan, so I understand why you as a Lions fan is dealing with constant... I'm not a Lions fan. I like the Lions. I'm not a Lions fan. It's dealing with constantly with incompetent coaching front office personnel. We had the problem before we hired Flores and Greer. Uh, yeah, Dolphins have years of, of bad coach. Most teams have years of bad coaching. You know, usually it's the case that there are less good coaches than there are good quarterbacks, I think. I think, you know, like the teams that we see with like playoffs this year and then they miss the next year and then they're in again and then they miss and then they miss again. And that's usually because they have a good quarterback, but they don't have a good coach. Or they have a good coach, but they don't have a good quarterback. The teams that like make it every year have a good coach and a good quarterback. And, you know, the ones that have or like a phenomenal coach or a phenomenal quarterback. Those are the teams that like make it every year. But that's, you know, most teams have one or the other, a bad coach or a bad quarterback. That's just the way it is. I think this, the Lions have been able to make it because of Stafford, not because of their coaching. Uh, Dirkea says, Mitch is a Pats fan, but respect to you for repping the Finns. Lions will get Brian Dayball from the Bills. He's another Patriot guy, but yeah, he's done a really good job in Buffalo. I really like the way he calls offense. He'll go somewhere for sure. He's a, he's a candidate. Um, Every game, the Chicago Bears defense is carrying the offense. Do you think that is becoming internally an us versus them resentment problem in the locker room? I probably, I, I would suspect because this has been a theme for the last three years. So I think very much like the Jacksonville Jags of 2017, 2018, that was a team that basically they imploded because they didn't have a quarterback and the defense, no matter how good it was, they couldn't continue to win games. So yeah, I, I think there's always a bit of that. Do you think Lewis Riddick for the Giant, uh, Lions GM? I don't think so, but I, he could be in conversations to get a job. Maybe. Coffin says, you got the most talented young running back in the country. Detroit needs to take money. I don't know about that, but take, yeah, I don't know about the, the running back part, but <laughs> um, what else we have? Ben says, interested, instead of Patricia, wish they hired Jeff Daniels. He would have done wonders for the offense. I do think you need to head in the offensive direction. Chris Spielman for the Lions GM job says Brianna, Brianna or Brianna. I'm not sure. Uh, James says Scott Mitchell, <laughs> Joey Harrington, John Kitna is the discord free. Yes. Who replaced Patricia uh, Bevel will be the interim coach. Do, do, do. 
O-line is not terrible. It's pretty bad. It's not, it's not, it's not terrible. It's not good either. It's like kind of average. Brent says Stafford gets like one to two seconds every play. The receivers get about 15 yards down the field. Um, attention Lions fans. Who replaced him? Says Hans. Singh says 2020 Jets are the worst NFL team of all time. Arthur says, I usually agree with a lot of your takes, Mitch, but GMs and head coaches get their money no matter what, so I'm not going to lose any sleep. See, this is just uh, my perspective. I I don't ever get happy over somebody losing a job or or losing a you know something big, right? Or getting hurt. There are people out there that get happy when a player gets injured or a guy loses his job. Bro, I'm not going to be happy about that. Sure, you don't have the you don't have to lose sleep over it. I won't either. I'm not going to pretend and say I'm going to oh, I'm going to be worried about Matt Patricia where he's going to be tomorrow. He's going to live on the street. I'm not going to be, you know, fake and say, I, yeah, 100%. But I'm not going to sit here and, and be like, oh, yes, Matt Patricia, he fired. Yeah, good. Like, no. No. Especially because I respect him. I don't want to do that. Kevin says, least talented Patriots team ever. I've been a fan since Steve Grogan. <laughs> uh eric martin says i would like to see kaepernick oh god okay uh yeah good luck with that i mean i i, I love kaepernick okay as much as the next guy but uh, to say that he would be great uh, he also doesn't even seem like he wants to play like I, I don't know like he doesn't I think he did, and then there was just this moment where he was just like, you know, I'm getting my money regardless, and I'm doing bigger things than football. So Kaepernick's doing him, man. He's doing him. I don't think he wants to play in the NFL. He's older now anyways, like, and he's not better than Stafford. So I don't, I don't really get that. Like, should he be in the NFL? Yes. But should he be a starter? No, he's not that good. He's not, you know, he's not Michael Vick coming out of jail good like he's not like walk on the field be the best athlete on the entire field like Michael Vick Brian says Mitch out of curiosity do you think the Bears should fire Nagy and Pace yes I don't know about Nagy as much but definitely Pace I think he's the bigger issue because he totally whiffed on the quarterback selection when you know Mahomes and Watson were there like that is the worst pick I've ever seen like the fact that he saw Mitch Trubisky as much. I like Mitch Trubisky. I'm not going to pretend like I didn't, but I did, I thought he was the third best quarterback. Like I wasn't sitting here saying that he was better than Mahomes or Watson. That's the thing. Like all he had to do is pick two of the three. Like even if he picked Watson over Mahomes, people wouldn't be sitting here being like, whoa, that was a terrible pick. Like they would just be like, oh, Mahomes was better, but they're both awesome. So like, and probably, you know, Watson probably would be better with the Bears because that defense is awesome. And Watson's never kind of had that support before. Has Decker even allowed a sack? Decker is pretty good. Uh, Eric Martin says, can't run out of the pocket. Uh, Jake says, Patricia coming back for his job in New England said this since the day he was considered for head coach jobs. Yeah, he probably will. I mean, McDaniels did, but again, uh, there's a clear difference between McDaniels and Patricia, right? Um, Belichick hasn't brought back other coaches before, like Bill O'Brien. He didn't like bring back Bill O'Brien. So what else do you, Don, you don't know if you think the line is again, blah, blah, blah. Ultra is in the chat. Daniel says Robert Sala, head coach, and better defensive line with more young, faster receivers that could get space to help Stafford. I do think they do need a receiver other than Galladay. We've seen that this year. And I do agree. They need pass rush just in general. They need pass rush. Uh, But, I mean, if the Lions had this current roster next year and they added a receiver and a pass rusher, they would be good with better coaching. I mean, you look at this team this year. If they win two or three one-score games and the games that they were leading by 14 points, 
if they just had a, a smarter direction on game day where they just, you know, played more efficient football, they would be probably like in the mix for a playoff spot right now. So they're not that far away. So that's why it's an interesting decision whether they want to try to compete for a playoff spot or they want to kind of re, re scrap it and rebuild. Lord says, do, so you know the Bucks drafted Keyshawn Vaughn? Yes, I do. Mostly to use him in the screen and dump off plays. Do you think the Bucks should try bringing him into the game plan more? I would much appreciate if they did. Him or Shady McCoy over Leonard Fournette any day of the week. Leonard Fournette cannot catch. Ultra says Dimitrov completely flopped the year after the Super Bowl. He had a decent class last year, but overall just picked mediocre players over elite players. All right. John says it all starts with ownership. Yes, I agree. Marsha says that's the smartest thing I've ever heard. Not exactly sure. Brent Brent says top 10 O-line. Who are you watching, Don? <laughs> Guillermo says uh, bad coach. Guillermo, is that your name? James says Stafford is trash. Don says Brent, go Google. Uh, what else we got? Coaching matters most, says Marsha. Uh, what else we got? FSE, how the bloody was Patricia along with Dan Quinn and Bill O'Brien fired before Adam Gase, says the Jets fan. No, okay, this is why, bro. I've been telling you this all year. The Jets are keeping Adam Gase because they want to lose every game. What do you not understand? They're trying to get first pick. They're doing this on purpose. I think the Lions fired Patricia because they want to see what this team is without the coach there. They want to see, you know, what do we have in some of the players on defense, offense, quarterback, all that stuff. They want to see the team under different leadership. They want to see the players specifically under different leadership. That's why the Lions did it. The Jets kind of know what they have and they don't. And they kind of understand this is a young team that is building. They need a quarterback. They know that Gase is going to lose. So they're going to keep him there. Sarah says, thank God for the Lions, uh, for Lions fans and Stafford. Don't bring Dan Quinn. A Dan Quinn, I'm not a Dan Quinn guy. And nothing against Dan Quinn, by the way, personally. I just, as a football coach, I don't, I'm not a fan. Um. Committee says, hey, new fan here. Do you think they will extend Galladay? I think they will. Scott says, Cal Caldwell firing was right. He was mediocre at best. Hiring Quinn and Patricia was the problem. I like that logic. John says, wouldn't the Lions do well with the Colts former Super Bowl winning head coach? Uh, Tony Dungy? Tony Dungy is retired, man. He's old. Marsha says, wow, you're good. I'm subscribing. Thank you. Brent says, Google says O-line's decent at best, at least on the right side. They are garbage compared to any other team, which is why you want Caldwell back. You're good with being average. Brent understands. John says, ownership is to blame because we have changed everything else. Yep. Yep. Ownership's important. I know guys, you only, you know, we never see on ESPN Stephen A. Smith ranting about the ownership, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Ownership's important. Lions will continue to be the Lions until their new ownership. Lee says Dan Quinn as head coach. Uh Detroit says, I'm going to be happy and cheer about it. Matt Patricia is a bum. All right, buddy. More power to you, buddy. Kaepernick is richer now than ever. I agree. Scott says, O-line has a decent, decent pe By the way, I, I, did I ever tell you a story? I saw Kaepernick. I was like, I was at a gy uh, gym in New York on a trip and I saw him. He was like, my TV in the corner, he was like five feet away. He looked in shape too. He looked like he was come he, he was coming back. Jake says going to take this dab this dub, this dab Mitch and do the dishes, but always good contact, 
content whenever I pop in. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate you joining. Brent says, why you all say sell the Lions who has 2.2 billions? Just saying, just laying around. <laughs> Richard says, Eric Bieniemy will be linked to the Lions and every head coaching opening. I agree. Uh, FSE says, the Trubisky pick wasn't terrible. People thought Mahomes or Watson could bust. I know they thought Mahomes could bust, but Watson? I mean, did you watch him in college? I get that Mahomes could bust because he had a high, you know, volatile style of play that was kind of uncertain. It's kind of weird to say that now, but yeah, it was the case. Hugo says, hey, Mitch, do you see the Lions and the Falcons draft a quarterback now that they seem to be cleaning the house? That's kind of what I've been talking about, Hugo. Like, I don't know. Like, they could, they couldn't. Um, I think Atlanta is more likely to do so. Detroit, I think... I think the contracts of Stafford and Ryan have a lot to do with that. I want personally to see Ryan and Stafford on different teams and kind of making a run, their last kind of run at, at doing something personally. Um, but that's just my opinion. They're kind of a part of the same era. Christian says, what do you think the Lions need to get better coaching wise and players? I think they need to get, I think I've kind of said this, but I, I, I would like to see them get better on the O-line. I'd like to see them get one receiver if they, assuming they sign Galladay. I think Jones can go get a different receiver in there. Defensively, they're, they're solid at, you know, in the secondary. I think, I think a lot of their problems come from pass rush and just overall talent on the front. And I think they could use one or two playmakers up there, but it, it obviously depends on who they bring in as the coach and how their scheme changes. Their can says, if you thought Mahomes or Watson would bust, you suck at scouting. JMR says he'll be back on the New England as GC. James says bad ownership, bad coaching, bad drafting. The Lions in a nutshell. Pride says Patricia is gone finally. 60 says Jets need to obtain 30 million loser Stafford now. Singh says, Mitch, are the Niners the best fit for Darnold? Darnold is basically Jimmy G. That's my, they're, they're very similar players. I don't know if you've ever watched them play. They are both extremely similar players. Like they play the same style. They're kind of like, I think Darnold's more mobile. He's better in the pocket. I, I don't, the, they're very, I mean, Darnold might be slightly more talented than Jimmy, but I think Jimmy has a uh, better intangibles, like, like leadership, confidence, um, just swagger, like, and he's he's proven more. So I think Darnold is like maybe physically slightly more talented, but Jimmy is kind of more of the proven commodity. So they're very similar. Uh, Eric says Dan Quinn is slightly better than Matt Millen. <laughs> Matt Millen was bad. FSE says I want the first pick because I want Lawrence. Yes, I agree. Committee says, I think Marvin Jones is very underrated. He always holds on. I think he's gone into uh, overrated at this point. Uh, Marsha says, it's the same way I feel about the Cowboys. The Joneses need to sell the team. A lot of Cowboys fans have felt that way for a while. Lord says, one more thing. So should the Bucs use Scotty Miller more and rotate Godwin? I would prefer, yeah, I, I think they should use four receiver sets more often than they do because leaving Scotty Miller on the bench is, I don't want to say criminal, but he's a really good player that seems to have rapport with Brady that does not play enough. So I would like to see those four receivers out on the field as much as they can. And you could almost use, you know, Mike Evans as like a big tight end uh, or, you know, the like line him up inside and, and try to do it that way. I mean, what's the difference between him and Travis Kelsey? I don't see much. Ben says this might be crazy, but I think the Lions will play better. Problem with the Bucks, problem with the Bucks is they don't adjust because coaching staff's too stubborn. Ben says this might be crazy, but I think the Lions will play better. Uh, probably. Troy says, who do you think would be the best hire for the Lions? I'm extremely biased. I know Lions fans are gonna hate me for saying this. The best coach you could possibly hire is Josh McDaniels, and I'm not gonna fade away from that. Josh McDaniels, I mean, Bill Belichick said of himself, he's, he might be the best offensive coordinator of all time. 
Uh, so, like, I know that he failed once when he was really young, but that was kind of really unfortunate circumstances. Bill Belichick failed himself once. So that does seem to happen. Um, and I don't think that's going to happen. But if my top candidate, if I had to hire one coach and my, my butt was on the line, I would hire Josh McDaniels. Now, other guys out there, I like Eric Bieniemy a lot. I do like Joe Brady a lot. Um, I do. I don't really know much about some of the defensive guys like Wink Martindale. I feel like some of the defensive guys, I would really have to talk to them. With the offensive guys, I feel like I can just watch them them scheme and watch their offenses play, and I can kind of like understand what they envision for a team. But in terms of defensive guys, I don't know because some defensive guys have outdated uh, outlooks on the game. Like in my opinion, they're too they're too old school, and I I want a you know, I want a new school coach. So I don't. I don't know, man. It's and and that's why I kind of like McDaniel's because he kind of has like that new school and old school approach like mixed together. Jake says, Mitch, honestly, what would you do with Carson Wentz if you were the coach? Oh God, bench him. Uh, he has potential, but have all the injuries are him. What? All these injuries are him up now. I don't know. Thoughts as well. Uh, well, I he's just very bad at decision-making. The offense hasn't helped him a ton. I think the offensive scheme has been a little vanilla this year, and they do struggle, and their receivers struggle to separate versus man-to-man, -man, I've noticed. But Carson Wentz has just, it, overall, his biggest issue is every play is the last play. I mean, he throws stupid interceptions, he gets stripped of the football. He takes too many sacks. Like, yes, he has talent, but he's inaccurate right now. Like, I would bench him. I I, I think he's a problem. I don't think he's... Is he fixable? I mean, maybe, but like... I don't know. I like Jalen Hurts. So, I would be playing him. And, and if Carson Wentz... If Jalen Hurts isn't the guy... Put Wentz back in, but at least, you know, threaten that he can actually lose his job. Because right now he just keeps playing like he can't ever lose his job. Antonio says, finally, Matt Patricia's gone. Let's go. Jim Harbaugh and also GM Reggie McKenzie. Wow. Jim Harbaugh? Really? Guys, have you seen the job he's done with Michigan? Both, uh, like, combine both the Keyshawn Vaughn idea, the one I just said to maximize the offense giving brady his favorite deep threat a b and godwin in the middle evans is evans and the safety valves at running back uh two face says as much as i love him i see stafford moving on unless this season ends in a win out fashion giving him hope for next year i'd probably agree new to the channel glad to be here says errington thank you watch me now says lions played a few good quarters this season more than a few good quarters play a few good games brandon says eric b enemy savvy says mitchell Trubisky is starting the bears game yes that's sad dak to the niners or browns dak to the cowboys i think that's what's gonna happen ultra says mitch who do you want maddie ice and stafford to go to i'd like to see maddie ice in indianapolis and i'd like to see matthew stafford in san francisco um and that's exactly what Durkan said FSE says, I thought the Lions would go to 9-7 and seven and almost win the division. They don't need to clean house just yet, in my opinion. Do you think a good new coach and rookie quarterback can bring them to the playoffs? I don't think the quarterback, again, is the issue. I think it's more to do with the coaching. Um, and I don't think a rookie quarterback, is, especially picking like at 10th or whatever, is going to be better than Stafford. So, I mean, maybe like in two, three years, they could be they could be great together, but I think the Lions, if they go the move on from Stafford route, they're going to be worse off for the next two years to three years, but then maybe be better down the line if they get the right guy. Uh, PJ says, what's your top five corners? It's a random question. Uh, I'm going to say Ramsey, Gilmore, Humphrey, Alexander, and Byron Jones. Bro Roland says, Lions need to hire Lewis Riddick and Urban Meyer. If we can't get Meyer, 
than Sal uh, Salah. Next best choice from San Francisco. I always want to say Saleh, but I know that's wrong. Major Bryant says Adam Gase the Lions. I'm calling it. No. Singh says Mitch. Do you know the Browns play the Titans? Yes, I do. John says Patricia and Quinn brought in a bunch of old players to repay them for what they did, repay them for what they did in New England. Yes, they did. Um, I think part of that was to do with trying to bring the culture to the organization. Uh, Brandon says, and the fit in the scheme. Wow, best offensive coordinator of all time. That's craziness. I don't mean like best offensive coach. That's different. Best offensive coordinator. Uh, is a different conversation because obviously the best offensive coach of all time is Bill Walsh, um, Sean Payton, uh, those guys. But the best offensive coordinator is different because that's strictly talking about offensive coordinators. What else we have? John says, if Caldwell had a running back when he was there, they would have been a lot better. Okay. I don't think running backs win or lose you games. Dakota says, who knew that cloning the Patriots wouldn't work unless you're actually Bill Belichick. I think most people knew that. Bruce Arians, I know that you're sarcastic though. Bruce Arians needs to needs his ass fired. Yes. Uh, next, Roland says, I heard something that Calvin Johnson is thinking about coming back. Yeah, okay. Dr. Fu says, I hope the new coach will take that the offensive line more serious. That had more to do with the uh, GM. Hugo says, who do you think was the best coaching hire of last season? Rivera, McCarthy, Rule, Stefanski, Judge. Thanks for the stream, Mitch. You... Have crazy football knowledge. Thank you, Hugo. Um, in terms of those, I have not liked what I've seen from McCarthy. Probably he's last on the list. Rivera has been fine, but he's he's been Rivera. Like he's always been a solid coach. Uh, Stefanski's been good, so he's at the he's near the top. I like Matt Rule quite a bit, uh, but I question how much that's Joe Brady more than Matt Rule. And Joe Judge, I like a lot. So. I think based on this season, Stefanski would be first. And man, I think the it would go judge second, rule third, maybe rule second, Rivera fourth, and then McCarthy fifth. Brandon says, if the Lions hire Josh McDaniels, that's insanity. Plus, he already turned the Lions job down. All right. Uh, Tampa says, Jamel Dean isn't playing tomorrow. Now I'm trying to figure out who is going to be the best fit to guard Tyreek Hill. Um, uh, I don't know. Sean Murphy bunting and double coverage. Matthew says Harbaugh is weird. Michigan is really the only place that he's failed. I mean, what has he had? Two or three, three positions? Uh, he's just, I to me, Harbaugh is too old school. He's the game is passed him by. Guy runs college offense like it's like it's 1986. I don't know what to say. Ultra says, why do you troll your camp by playing, saying Miami sucked? Because they do. Ben says, rookie quarterback playoffs. Are you kidding me? Uh, what else we got here? Ultra says, better offensive coach over the last 15 years. Sean Payton over Andy Reid, even though Andy Reid's great. But Ju Ju Judai King? Judah? Judah? I don't know. Do the Cowboys make the playoffs? No. Singh says, Mitch, Leonard Fournette is the worst running back. Yes. Troy says, what about the Northwestern head coach for the Lions? Uh, I don't know much about him, so I would need to do my research. Do you think Antonio Brown will keep a level head or Antonio Brown's been fine? I don't, I don't know. But I do see a problem. I do see uh, the problem with Brady's deep ball coinciding with Scotty Miller not being on the field. So I, I do think Scotty Miller needs to be on the field more when they take those shots. Aaron says, Caldwell should come back, but it would be nice to see a younger coach that has more modern scheme. Yes, I agree. I thought Peyton Manning beat you guys yesterday. Huh? What are you talking about? I got an OC for you, Mike Martz. Greatest show on turf. He was really good, and then he lost four Hall of Famers, and then he wasn't so good. So, yeah. Uh, hey, I thought Peyton Manning beat you guys. What are you talking about? I'm still confused. Fournette had a good rookie year. Yes, he did. I agree. All right, I think we're done, though. It's 2.45 for me, 5.45 for some, probably. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Hopefully I answered all your questions. If I did, Gronk spike that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more NFL. Let me know your thoughts if you haven't already in the comment section below on the Matt Patricia firing and Bob Quinn firing. Who would you like to see the Lions hire? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, you could also hit that notification bell for the latest upload the next time I go live, which will be tonight, talking about fantasy football. You can also subscribe to my Patreon for exclusive contract uh, content, not contract. Link is in the description. Patreon exclusive content like best bets. I appreciate all the love on the best bets video, by the way. That's been awesome. Uh, what else do we got here? Discord in the link below if you want to talk football. If you're a Lions fan, there's plenty of Lions fans in the Discord. So definitely check out the BLV Discord. Link is in the description. Everything's in the description. Instagram, Twitter, you know, my phone. No, just kidding. Not that. Uh, what else? All that stuff. It's in the description. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. It's Mitch. Peace.